thanks for coming by. I'm, uh, I am Jeremy King. I'm, uh, well, for many years, I've described myself as a restaurateur, and now I can say I'm a hotelier, but it was never, it was never my intention. Uh, in fact, it was never my intention even to be in the business because I had no vocation. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was, like a lot of people, particularly in those times, you're talking early 70s, was getting no vocational guidance. There I was, um, working part-time in a wine bar, which was one of those, <clears throat> which was a new invention in the very early 70s, working for Sears's, in fact. But I liked it, I liked this business. There was something about it. It was the combination of the interaction with people and the element of physicality, the fact that it was always such a different day. Every day was different. I stayed in the business. During that time, I met Chris Corbin, who'd had a more formal career. And Chris and I met and resolved to open a restaurant together. This was in 1980, 81. And out of that came Caprice. And the best thing that ever happened to us is that we had 100% control. And we, we tried to do things differently. Good thing for me is because I wasn't a trained restaurateur. Chris would set things up as it should be. And I would say, well, that's not logical. We could do it better this way. And people go, oh, no, you can't change that. And that's something which you've got to take with you is just because it's always been done that way doesn't mean to say it has to continue. So it all started at Caprice. Went on to the Ivy, which sadly is being torn apart at the moment. Then we took Jay Shiki, another, it was in 1896 that restaurant was opened. And that taught me about confidence. And the big authority on any of our businesses, if you want to sum it up in one word, how do you become successful, is by gaining authority. It's a strange word, but authority, I don't mean in terms of a censoring body, but authority in that people trust you and believe what you're doing. So the other lesson is stick to your guns. When you know it's right, when your intuition tells you it's right, stick with it. This is the Woolsey, built as a car showroom, which was followed by Delaunay in, uh, when was that, 2012, I think, 11, 12, beginning, end of 11. Zadell drove Chris mad with that one, went to see it. Some of you may have known it as the Atlantic Bar and Grill. Very naughty place, very, very naughty place. Colbert is a story of a man, Frenchman, being thrown out of Paris. One of my strange stories, uh, um, I, I, had to, I had to have the story of how he would open this place and develop the rooms. So I decided he seduced his boss's daughter in Paris and got drummed out of Paris. I'm a, bit, I'm a bit silly, but it makes it more fun. And then Fishers, which is the story of a Jewish and a, and a, a uh, Catholic couple fleeing Vienna in the early 30s and opening up in Lon London and bringing a bit of Vienna with them. Um, and how would they have done the restaurant? Then we went on to the Beaumont, six years in the making this, because actually we demolished the whole building behind the facade and have built it back up, but as if Jimmy had built it. This building was originally built in 1926 as a garage. And I wrote a history thinking, what was happening in 26 when this building originally came up? So imagine my fictional character, Jimmy Beaumont, and they persuade him, this is my imaginary story, to go to London and open a hotel with an American sensibility. It suddenly the whole place made sense to me. I knew what it looked like. I knew what, how he would have decorated it. So that's, um, that's me. That's a little bit about my philosophy. So thank you all for listening patiently. <laughs>